What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN GameScoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, Scoop. Brian Altano, oh. and making his first GameScoop appearance is CJ Gibson. What's up, Guardian? Oh, wrong, no, show. wrong show. Wrong show. But that's okay. What's Guys, new in yeah. Destiny 2? If, if oh, anyone wow. out there has tuned into Fireteam <laughs> Chat, you may recognize CJ from other shows such as... Fire Fire Chat. Chat. <laughs> <laughs> that is it, yeah. But thanks for the invite. Uh, been at uh, IGN for what, seven years now? That I mean, one? forever, in, indirectly. First E3 yeah, was right, 2006, yeah. but yeah, officially uh, yeah. since 2015. Full time since that's 2015. That's when we put a ring on yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, uh, famously Canadian. <laughs> You'll hear Famously it. Canadian. The abouts and errs and tomorrows. And process. I, tomorrow. I, can't, I, never I can't get away from the process. process. And I've also, clearly Canadian. Yeah. Uh, I've also realized what, just now we realize what I've done here. We've got the, we've got the single, the double, and the triple dads. Right. All oh, in the right. show. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Bad show. You have three kids. That's right. I'm the only, I'm the only non dad here, ladies and gentlemen. Yet. Uh, still be a daddy though. We're gonna <laughs> 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 we got a great show for you this week. We're gonna talk about uh, old games on new consoles. Uh, we're gonna talk about the struggle of getting kids to play anything except for Fortnite. <laughs> but first, I want to let you guys know you can watch Game Scoop first on IGN Fridays at 3 p.m. Pacific. The show will hit the rest of the world Saturdays at 3 p.m. Pacific. So if you want your scoops early, join us on IGN Friday afternoons. 3 p.m. Uh, and if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. GameScoop is IGN's video game talk show. We uh, post a new episode each week covering everything from the latest news to the oldest games that we all grew up playing. And GameScoop is also available in your favorite podcast service. So this week we're going to check in with a bunch of uh, your questions, uh, your burning questions from email. I thought you said yurt questions. I heard yurt, yurt questions. Well. <laughs> yurt. Yurt. I have one. What yurt. is yurt? <laughs> <laughs> What's the what are the top ten yurts? What's <laughs> great? I'm know. looking for a good yurt for the <laughs> Tomb Raider's got some good yurts. Have you guys done a, a yurt article yet? Uh, top ten yurts? Yeah. No. Best I mean, yurts in games. Yeah. Just, you've done just about everything else. Yeah, Gaming yeah. chairs and uh, yeah. <laughs> top ten yurts. Uh, our first email comes from Samwise from Michigan. He emailed us at the address gamescoop at IGN.com, just like you can. Samwise from Michigan says, My first console was a PlayStation 2, mm. but I didn't get super into gaming until late PS2, early PS3. And with the lack of games catching my interest at the current moment, I was thinking about playing some old games that I never got a chance to play. Some games I'm looking into are the Mega Man Legacy Collections, System Shocks 1 and 2, and the Devil May Cry series. I am interested in a wide variety of games, but I want to know what the crew... At Camp Goose would suggest that I play. Keep in mind, I have a PS2, PS3, and PS4, as well as a PC. Also looking to get into JRPGs and was wondering what games would be a good place to start, whether it's old or new. Mm. So, well, it's, uh, it's CJ, by the way, to catch you up, Camp Goose is an anagram of GameScoop. Gotcha. I, I yeah. figured that, but... Oh, I didn't know that either. That's there, great. There we go. There you go. There. Welcome. I knew about Omega Cops. Also Omega Cops, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so first of all, if you're looking to get into JRPGs, it's a shame he doesn't have a Switch. Yeah. For yeah. Octopath Traveler, because that's yeah. the best JRPG I've played um, in a long time. He did, by the way, he glossed over it, but I was already getting ready to make my goof. But uh, he did say he had a PC. He has a PC as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if, he's, you know, if he wants to start playing some older games, if we started with the PlayStation 4 mm -hmm. uh, that he's got, there is a, there's a lot of good retro <sighs> gaming to be had on PlayStation 4. He mentioned the Mega Man Legacy Collections, and I, I, I recommend those. Yep, yeah. Wholeheartedly. Those yes. are great. While you're there, grab the Disney Afternoon Collection. I was gonna say that's also from Capcom. Yep. As for the as for the Mega Man Legacy Collections, I think it's it's worth getting both one and two mm -hmm. for the originals because yep. Mega Man one, two, and three are all stone cold classics. And then four, five, and six are totally good. It's just yep. more of the same and it starts yep. feeling very samey. And then for the, the the back half, the the legacy collection two, seven was the first time it went sixteen bit. That was significant. Eight it went on 32-bit PlayStation, that yep. was cool. And then uh, 9 and 10 were sort of like the first time they revisited the, yeah. the classic it's series. Weird that those they are put cool. those four to the side like that. Yeah, I mean, let's get their own collection. Yeah, everybody's got their own little thing. 9 and 10 were really good, though. Hard. They're really good, really, yeah. Really good. They're yeah. made by Any Creates, uh, who just recently did Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, yep. which is also great. I don't recommend any of those games. No? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm assuming like if Sam, I'm assuming Samwise is younger, right? Because it's PlayStation 2 is his first console. First console yeah. So, yeah. you know, he's, how I don't know how old that makes him, but pretty young. No one knows. Um, no, there's no way anyone <laughs> can know. But uh, I think it's hard. I think it's really hard to go back and have a deep appreciation for like 8-bit, maybe not as much 16-bit style games, but certainly 8-bit style games I think are challenging to go back to and play if like PS2 is the generation that you grew up gaming with. But those collections are really nice. With re They have a rewind feature. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can save sa save your game at any point. That's a good point. The so. save state. I mean, so I actually, I feel like this is a dad show. I can say the story. Dad One show. of my most defining moments was watching my son play through Mega 
Mega Man 2. I, I let him skip past Mega Man 1. I did not tell him the save state feature ah. until after he beat Mega Man 2. Oh. He couldn't figure that out on his then, own? Well, it, oh. he kind of knew, but I just I didn't want to let him. Then on the third <laughs> one, he was like, oh, Dad, you mean to tell me that like, I got to pause it at any time? And then it was like a strategy in the yeah. game. So right, it, right, it, it's right. pretty cool to watch them kind of. You do. become um, addicted to save states. I'm going to yeah. save. Like, I beat an enemy, save. Exactly. Save the state. Oh. If, Always. Yeah. If for whatever reason you skip Shadow of the Colossus mm -hmm. on its mm -hmm. initial console release. The, that just got a new release. Yeah, the remaster is yeah. gorgeous and it's um it's really fun and I think like even if you don't have a ton of experience with games like that, it's it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah, I was also gonna say for uh, JRPGs, uh, Final Fantasies ten or X ten and ten and ten mm -hmm. two. That's mm -hmm. how they announced them. Those got HD remasters. Yep. Right. Like Final Fantasy nine is one of my favorite PS one era RPGs that he probably yep. missed. And That's obviously that one like, hasn't been re released though, has it? It's on Steam. That one's on Steam. And so yeah, um, like I skipped over like four, five and six, right? I'm mainly trying to think about PlayStation era, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. games that he might be into. Yeah. Uh, in terms of PS one era RPGs he missed, Grandia and uh, Suikoden are personal favorites of mine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if either of those are easily findable or playable now. Uh, the issue well, is on, on PS4, uh, playing classic games like that is a lot harder than it should be because mm -hmm. yeah. there isn't a really But a he also place has a PlayStation 3. I was going to say, okay. what's That's crazy though, right. is like Suikoden and a lot of those games did come to PS3 and then everyone's like, great, like all those modern classics are available again, but now they're gone again. Yeah, now they gone, just yeah. didn't make them yeah. re-accessible. Well, I mean, that's kind of like the Nintendo Switch situation, right? Yeah. Yeah. But like my PS3 is broken, for example, so yeah. it's like, Ooh, well, and did you have right. a launch PS3? Because yeah. it had built an emulation, the launch yep. ones, my right? Launch like I, I did too. Yeah. And um, what about, uh, did he mention Devil May Cry or did you say that? He said he's he's interested in the Devil May Cry series. Okay, so I mean, I was a huge Ninja Gaiden fan. Like Ninja Gaiden Sigma, Sigma 2 came out after being released on the Xbox, and those games for me still stand up as like probably some of the best action games of all time, actually. Mm -hmm. Super difficult, but like once you get into them, they're really good. How do you play them on a PlayStation console today? Well, that's the problem. It's like if you have three, you can play it okay. on three, but okay. then for four, yeah, I don't know if it's something. There's a PlayStation now, but it's like, have you guys ever done that? Yeah. Uh, you've used it? Yeah, I've used it. How terrible is it? Um, <laughs> I don't want to assume that it is, but you're playing like a dedicated internet line where you're like renting the you're game streaming the, like yeah. you're streaming the game yeah there's no like true ownership um it's like somebody's holographically beaming a video game yeah which is weird but it works when it works but, like but from I, a latency standpoint playing an action game though um i think it's like less of an issue with something that isn't like completely insane like i think okay, I, yeah. when I, I played resident evil 4 with it and it's it was kind of tricky like it was a little choppy yeah, but yeah. when you play like an old rpg or something that's like it's not a little bad. more scaled back it's not that bad gotcha yeah i think uh again going back to him having a pc there's like collections like uh sega genesis collection on steam yep. like i was well i was just gonna say that that was also the Sega Genesis Classics was just released, and that's on PS4, mm. probably on Steam as well. I didn't that's a really good collection. Yeah. Uh, yeah like, the first three Streets of Rage are on there. You are uh, missing a lot of, like, when I think about the classic games that I do love and do recommend, like, I was just saying, sort of half jokingly, don't play any of those old games. But uh, <laughs> the ones that do hold up, that still in 2018 still, like, feel good, even if you don't have nostalgic feelings for them, a lot of them are like Nintendo games for right. me. Yeah. And so you are missing, like, you can't get those on PC or PlayStation That's platforms, true. obviously. So, you That's know, true. you are missing Super Mario World and um, some of that. Yeah. You can, you can grab an NES or SNES Classic. Get an SNES Classic. That's actually a really yeah. great idea. That's what those you should do. Yeah. If you've if you've never played those SNES games, like the SNES Classic is the greatest value for your dollar ever. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Wow. For sure. Yeah. And emulation and save states. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. Like I mean, uh, remaking them. There's a bunch of one-off or just a bunch of our old arcade games available on PS4 as well. Yes. Yeah. So like a bunch of Neo Geo games. The Metal the Metal Slug series is on there. You can't really go wrong with any of yeah, those. Yeah, those are awesome. Uh, there's a Double Dragons, which Damon and I play through occasionally. Yeah. Which yeah. I don't know <laughs> yeah, if I actually <laughs> would recommend them. Yeah. Yeah. Which I one? love them. Which well, Double Dragon? One and two are both on. Yeah. On PS4. Okay. Like right, the arcade right. versions, which yeah. is weird because if yeah. you grew up with the NES, they're different. Same yep. with Contra. I mean, they're yep. on there too. I remember. Yeah. I remember watching you guys play number four, and I was like, "Hey guys, four is not good. Should I get into this? We don't recommend four. <laughs> no, four is not good. Uh -huh. It's like I love those games because I grew up playing them. But if you didn't do that, they're just they're just kind of like they're mindless brawlers. You can yeah. just you pump credits or quarters yeah. into there, so there's not really it's, much of a challenge. To it. And it's really weird. Spoilers, but you get to the end of Double Dragon and you have to fight your friend. Yeah. Always, and then yeah. the winner gets the, the girl <laughs> that was hanging. Yeah, in the, last the girl has been <laughs> kidnapped in the beginning, and it's uh, unclear. You're both going to save her. It's unclear which one of you was was dating her. But then you both fight each other for her at the end. It doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, yeah really. It's really dumb. I mean, neither do the men bursting through the walls. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. that sounds. We're talking about the same game with the bobo. Yeah. Like, the fact yeah. that there's like a Japanese spike temple behind yeah. that high school. There's a lot of <laughs> stuff to unpack there, but uh, the ending is. 
A lot of questions. Weird. <laughs> uh, and then, so th- there's a bunch of retro games on PS4, but then there's also a bunch of retro games. It's uh, air quotes for people listening yep. to the podcast. <laughs> uh, Brian, I know you're also playing Dead, Dead Cells yes. right now. Yep. Uh, and that game is awesome. Yeah, I don't really think it's really out on good. PS4 until August 7th, mm-hmm. uh, but that game is really, really cool. Yep. yep. Roguelike Metroidvania. Roguevania, they're yep. trying to call it. Don't know mm. if I'm going to be on board with that. Rogue Legacy <laughs> is another one that's like Rogue very Legacy old is great. school in its approach, but uh, has a lot of lot of sort of modern sensibilities. Yeah, um, you got, obviously uh, you got Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight is on yeah. there. Obviously, Splunky. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Damon's favorite game of all time. Well, I don't know about that. But it's definitely <laughs> it's it's in my top ten at least. You still recently. play it every day? I haven't been playing it recently because oh, there's yeah. been so much other stuff coming yeah. out. Yep. Like I yeah. can't even keep up with. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Octopath. Now I'm playing Dead Cells. I have Captain Toad. I haven't even started it yet. Dude, it's just, it's too much. I haven't started the Mega Man X Legacy Collection yet. The struggle is real. Uh, One more recommendation for retro style games on PS4 would be Resogun. Oh, Uh, yeah. The launch is awesome. Um, All the stuff that Housemarque put on PS4 is really fun. Yeah. And then you know, he has a PC also. There's like there's so much stuff to discover on on good old games, right? On mm-hmm. GOG.com. Yeah. All those it, old adventures. Like if you're open to like uh, Monkey Island and uh, King's Quest and Quest for Glory, those are amazing games. I feel like I'm not alone um, in like I was a console gamer growing up, right? So I definitely had this blind spot for like the Monkey Island games, the LucasArts adventures, and then extending into like computer RPGs like Baldur's Gate and Planescape Torment, Neverwinter's Nights, and it was so much fun as an adult to go back through and fill in those gaps. And uh, uh, I highly recommend that to anyone that you know had that console background that I had. Yeah, a lot of really wonderful gaming goodness on those platforms. Good old games is just a treasure trove of great. You get like even games. even like and and again, I'm fascinated by like the games that hold up and the games that don't, which isn't like an indictment of like yo for like 1989, like this was the business. But sometimes that still works in 2018, and sometimes right. it doesn't. And yeah. so, like, getting you know, sort of really engrossed and uh, enraptured by a game like Sid Meier's Pirates or whatever, like, I still think that totally holds up and is like compelling and interesting. And like, the loop in it is like addictive. Um, or like the older Civilization games, like Civ Three, even I think was really wonderful. Um, yeah, for sure, Pirates is Jared Petty's favorite game of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, I even like the remake. When was the remake? Oh, let's see, mid two thousands. I think like I'm, I want to guess like two thousand five. All right, let's move on. This next email comes from Big Tony. Style. Hey, Big Tony, Big Tony Style. Oh. What's up, baby? Big Tony Style says my brother in law and I were discussing the trouble he has in trying to get my thirteen year old nephew to play games other than Fortnite. Oh boy, I was a little bummed thinking oh. about the pattern of games he's grown up with. Since he was little, it's mainly just been Minecraft, Skylanders, back to Minecraft, Roblox, and now Fortnite. What's wrong with that? What's the Scoop Crew's thoughts on the trends younger gamers are experiencing? Uh, it seems like younger gamers are experiencing less variety in the games they play, despite the massive variety of games that exist across all platforms. Uh, uh, CJ, now you have uh, your kids are a little bit older. I do. Some of them are. At yeah, least. eleven. They're, what forty and? Yeah, exactly. They're <laughs> older than I am. <laughs> eleven, eight, and four. But when I say that to somebody, they're like, "You have an eleven-year-old." I'm like, "Yeah, it scares me too, actually." Mm-hmm. And they're playing a lot of Fortnite. They're into Fortnite. Right? Fortnite and anything now that's shooter-related. Like I try to like you know. I, I kept them safe for so long. Now it's like, oh, Fort Ray was like the gateway. Yeah, <laughs> it's mm-hmm, like yeah. here you go. Now you want to play Titanfall, yeah. Call of Duty. Now you're doing hard it's drugs. Inter- yeah, exactly. It's, it's yeah. interesting like, that he also mentions Minecraft. In my mind, uh, yeah. Minecraft represents like a hard divide uh, in between two ver- two different uh, generations of gamers. Right? Mm-hmm. I feel like everyone before Minecraft cut their teeth on. Mario or Zelda yeah, or Sonic yeah. and like there's all this that was like their shared uh, experience of video games but the Minecraft generation like they grew up playing Minecraft and maybe yeah. didn't grow up with any Mario right. or Zelda or any that stuff and so like well now you have a game like I don't think Fortnite did this deliberately but now those Minecraft think, kids it's the natural, are 12 and 13 absolutely. and they're it's playing the a natural, building shooter it's like, the natural mm-hmm. extension of for what they grew up playing with uh, Minecraft yeah it was yeah. an art style where you're like hey why didn't Lego do this you, you felt that even at Minecraft levels where you're like, I don't understand. Like, even for me, I was not a big Minecraft guy. Both my kids loved it, and they played it on iPad. So even the control scheme where I'm like, you can't play it without a controller. Like, no. Like, want to play on the iPad. And so that was mind-boggling. There's a lot of sensibilities that those two games share. They're both um, sort of endless 
in exactly. many ways. They're, they're games as a service. Yeah. Yep. They're meant to be played yep. forever. They're also both uh, kind of infinitely shareable in mm-hmm. that you can take great things that you've created in them or great moments that you've had in them and yep. use them as bragging rights and put them out there. They're also games that you can be terrible at and still enjoy. Uh, I True. really like Minecraft. I played a ton of Minecraft, and I, I will download that. I'll download that game on any platform they put it on forever. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really play so much survival mode as I did just kind of just go in there and build stuff. And like I didn't ever really look online and go like, here's how you make the Millennium Falcon or something like that. But the fact that that option is there is awesome. Yeah. I'm super into Fortnite. I never thought I would be. I started playing that game on my paternity leave, and I kind of came up for air, <laughs> and go. I was like, I, I put like 30, 40 hours into this game. I'm like level 55 mm-hmm. in, the last, in the last battle pass. My like, kid's six weeks old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't met her, I haven't met her yet. Um, I, and I love that game because, again, you don't have to be great at it to enjoy it. And I think that yeah. like when we think of Fortnite, we just think of people running in circles shooting things. Um, but every single day, Fortnite goes... Here's a challenge. Like we hid letters all over the place. Go find them. And I'm like, oh, that's yeah. actually very Mario 64. Or they're like, oh, you yeah. have to you have to do this many objectives. And I'm like, oh, I remember doing stuff like that in Goldeneye. Like it's taking a lot of the things that we loved about old video games or even like sort of trophy and achievement culture and folding them all into one game that is kind of like endlessly fun. Mm. Which is super cool, yet a problem. Like yes. It creates that addiction thing that mm. at the age of my 11 and 8-year-old, and I mean, I love them, and my wife, God bless her, she's the one at home dealing with it most of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It pretty much is the thing like, oh, Dad, I need to get this challenge. Oh, the expiry yeah. thing. I, if I don't get this now, <laughs> that, I'm never going to get it again. I'm like... That FOMO, that fear of missing out, like it's w- huge. walks that line between being like really yeah. smart game design, but also like maybe a little bit predatory. Oh, yeah, no, that's like, true. Because I mean, and you pay for it. Like the, it's the most brilliant and diabolical. It is thing that not you free. Is you pay you <laughs> pay all. up front for the battle pass, but then yeah. like then you feel like you need to get what you pay for. Right? Yeah, like it's right. this weird no, balance yeah. of paying up front in order to earn things over time. Yeah, I've noticed with that too. There's a weird sort of remorse or guilt because the game is free. Mm-hmm. The battle pass is like eight or nine bucks. Yeah, you unlock enough currency to buy the next battle pass effectively in perpetuity as yep. long as you keep playing enough yeah. which is a lot but then they'll be like you hey don't. here's a new skin in the store and i'm like oh you guys have been so good to me here's ten dollars exactly here's 20 bucks here and there. um <sighs> the difference is when we grew up playing ocarina of time and mario 64 and goldeneye and super mario world all those classics um those games were just there on our shelf forever yeah it wasn't like mario was like hey uh if, if mario doesn't like do this thing today like peach is not gonna make that cake and she's well, gonna die <laughs> <laughs> you know? there's, there's definitely an argument of like uh uh, you, we touched on this at the top of the discussion with you know games as a service and mm-hmm. sticking with games you know forever for as long as they'll have you like right. you yeah. know um, which is you know Minecraft did it through free updates and now games have sort of figured out how to monetize players' time a little bit more. Mm deeply and i don't know that's right. what and i think that's what makes me nervous like being a destiny guy i had to drop it at least once there's things as a service <laughs> that you know they'll put in the game but then they can take it out and so you're paying for something and i don't know if you'll always have it so there's mm-hmm. this like tangibility factor as well too where it's like okay i got this skin but when fortnite shuts down yeah where does I mean, that go welcome to the or fortnite 2 welcome to the farce that is ownership of anything in video it's, games i know it's or really just weird. media yeah and media yeah, no one yeah. owns any music anymore no nope. yeah. or movies or anything yeah. like that we uh, i will say that there's a force for good here which is uh games for that younger generation that generation that came up on minecraft are actually a tool for self-expression that yeah. they really yes. weren't the way when we were well. when we were growing up like there's a lot of like minecraft is a very you know primitive game in its visuals and its style and what you're actually seeing on the screen but it's incredible sophisticated that a hundred million people play that game and have a hundred million different experiences where we all have the same experience with you know Zelda and Mario and that that sort of guided experience versus unguided experience is a really powerful tool and will shape games for mm-hmm. forever for the rest of time it's interesting yeah. you bring that up because I actually selected sort of a counterpoint email uh, to go along with big Tony Styles email this is Nick from Buffalo New York and he says uh, as someone who is going into their junior year of college studying architecture I often look back at what brought me here, and my answer tends to land on the games that I played when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I played copious amounts of Minecraft and Terraria just when those games were hitting their stride. It was 8th and 10th grade for me, and they left a lasting impact on me. They were one of the very few games that allowed for a complete sense of freedom and creativity that I was desperate for while still being a fun game. These are games that amplify player choice into a very real ability to design. I'm always sorely disappointed how hollow and empty many games' building systems are, Mm. often only letting you pick from a pre-selected design, like Mm -hmm. Skyrim's building system, or they feel clunky 
key like Fallout 4. So my question is, with the zeitgeist of Minecraft starting to quiet down, will we see a true focus on players' ability to use design skills within games beyond specking out their characters' stats? Yeah. And that kind of goes along with what we were saying about Fortnite, right? Just yeah. sort of that yeah. natural evolution. Yeah, we, it has that element to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say it's phenomenal that that guy is an architecture major. That's because of cool. Minecraft. Because of background of yeah, Minecraft. That's that is cool. incredibly yeah. cool to see. Yeah. We, I mean, even games that people look down on, like a game like, I don't know, like Farmville, for example. Right. Like that was a really big deal that like this is my farm and no one looks like mine yeah. and I chose to build it in the way that I did. And like as a reflection of yourself and as a tool for self-expression in video game form, like everyone like no one would ever say that that game, it, you know, can stand up to right. like, I don't know, like an Uncharted. But it's just trying to do a different thing, right? Yeah. Like, you yeah, know, and giving we, we see it with Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing, Fallout yeah. 4's whole thing where you basically can build entire settlements, which now they're rolling into the next one. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's definitely something that's here to stay, and that's cool to see. I I wonder, not necessarily worry, but I I do wonder what this what these games will be the gateway drug to. You know, like we yeah. all grew up, we have our paths through video games. Will Fortnite funnel people towards God of War because um, they want something more story driven? Will they head more towards like the Minecrafty or like Call of Duty style games where they are endless and there are yeah. new, there is new content all the time? Uh, I don't know. I'd be interested to see wh yeah. what the steps are for there. What I, the big question mark to me is that, you know, today there are so many pixelated Metroidvania games because uh, gamers grew up playing Super Metroid right. and Symphony of the Night, and now they're adults. They're making the games that they loved yeah. as kids. So, like, 10 or 15 years from now, what's the younger generation of gamers who grew up on Minecraft and Fortnite, what are they going to be making right. that sort of they're embellishes be, their nostalgia? They're mm -hmm. all going to be building games, right? All base I mean, yeah, that's like, like well, what they all do. Yeah, and I will say just from watching them play it, it's cool. They actually talk about that stuff. Like, you know, there's double pump and all these other things, and they pay attention to people online playing the games. Like, I wonder why they do that. So my kids even start asking questions like, you know, who's making those decisions to actually nerf the shotgun or do this? Right. And then you can kind of like talk to them about game development. And it's a, it's like a real thing. So mm -hmm. I think even for me, you know, that did not seem like an option like when I was young. Now for them, it's like, hey, we live right next to PlayStation. You know, mm -hmm. it's right there. Right. Like, and it's a legitimate thing. Yeah. Right. And that, and that the game is growing and changing every day shows yeah. that the evolution there, there is listening. Yeah. Whereas when we were kids, you'd play Zelda and you'd be like, well, someone made this, and now it's just here. Like, yeah, someone yeah. on the Black other Fox. side of the world yeah. that seems yeah. so like mysterious. But they speak a different language. You you bring up a really good point, Damon, about the the sort of cyclical nature of uh, inspiration and saying like the Metroidvania genre and how people are growing up on it now. Um, and to them, it's not a throwback to an old school generation because they miss that. They're just playing games that like look pixely, and they're yeah. like, I don't yeah. get it, but people keep making these. That's weird. Yeah. It's sort of like how like in ten years, Stranger Things is going to be old school. <laughs> you know, and people are going to be like, well, yeah, they're, they're going to be like, yeah, you know, like I, I like the old stuff, like Stranger Things. And you're gonna be like, do you know, that's basically a cover <laughs> band of like the 80s yeah. that you yeah. missed. But yeah, I mean, no idea is original, as Nas says. Yeah, he's a rapper. <laughs> Big fan. I, I know that. Uh, but it's weird when you when you think of, yeah, those kind of games, you're right. Like I, I got a lot of respect for Fortnite because yeah. it was something that, again, probably could have been done a long time ago. And I think a combination of the art style, the way it feels, the way it plays, they just like hit that sweet spot. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, they've, they've done good. Uh, although I will say it's the first time my kid's been better than me at a game. Uh oh, there you go. That's that's psychologically, that's, the that's what's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I think deep down I'm like, the, oh, yeah. The, dude, the reflexes. Well, thing anytime is, real thing. he it's, beats you or does better than you, just punch him in the gut. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, it's got a few, hey, it's got a few years no to No battle pass for you. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly Each it. and every one of our children grow to destroy us. <laughs> I know. It's like deep down. They'll like, get you. Uh, <laughs> They'll get you. <laughs> just going to get there first. Yeah. We, uh, I think to bring it back around to Big Tony Styles' original question, like, no, it's like, if you grew up, it's just different, right? Like every yeah. generation has its own thing. So I don't necessarily see it as a problem or a bad thing that they grew up with, you know, Minecraft and Roblox instead of, you know, Mario and Zelda. But, uh, and we did touch on this, but I do think it's a concern that maybe they're not getting the broad gaming experience that right. we got. We're like, we played many, many different genres and styles of games and different visions and ideas of what a video game could be or should be. And if someone's only playing Fortnite, you know, it's like everyone looks back on their own childhood with like rose tinted glasses. But like yeah. 
I was bouncing around between like role playing games and adventure games exactly. and platforming games, and so there may be something lost there. That you do, may not do you think that's because we were like hardcore gamers though? I mean, I feel like the overwhelming yeah. majority of gamers are casual gamers mm. who only play one or two games a year. Like I, I knew know. plenty of kids in college that only played Mario Kart or Goldeneye or Halo yeah. or Counter Strike. Like they would really lock in on one or two games, and that would be it. Yeah, that could be true. I mean, I don't know. I guess if I go back to my sort of extreme youth when I was like six or seven, like extreme youth, th- but like the neighbor <laughs> kid, like I was always like an inside gamer nerd and like he was like an outside kid but like everybody had a nintendo and you had a stack of games so it's like yeah. he's playing like blaster master right, or whatever right. back then even Break though it. he was spending a lot yeah i know yeah, right. yeah it's like i spent last weekend with uh my best friend from childhood because he was visiting and uh, we spent like pretty much all of our time growing up playing video games together uh but i asked him when he was here i asked him if he's been playing anything recently and he said no because yeah. for him it was all of, it was always like a social experience right, right. He, just, right, right. he never played games on his own he only played them with me so no. i think that's also part of it too like uh, with fortnite it's just it's such a social it, yep. it is and, and that activity. O- that online component changes yeah. it too but yeah for me like i was always the guy on the block i don't care if you're playing this game i want to play this game be the best at this game and then bring on the next mm-hmm. like and that's where it's like i don't feel like that is the case anymore but that that's what those challenge aspects do a little bit they they incorporate that into the game in a way actually so. i mute everybody in fortnite cuz it's like people like your kids age who jump <laughs> on like hey who are we going to kill today exactly, kill yeah. i'm like mute 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 <laughs> sorry in advance <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> All right, moving on. This is Joseph, uh, and he says, I wrote back in April asking for must-play games for PlayStation, as I've never owned one. I'd like to share my progress so far with three-word reviews. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, so, God of War. It good game. <laughs> <laughs> God of War, favorite game ever. Wow. Ooh. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, strong. Not, not really a review. I guess it's kind of a review. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you get three words, man. Yeah, you get three words. <laughs> That's it. Uh, oh. Uncharted 1, mediocre shooty shooter. Uncharted 2, better shooty shooter. Okay. Uncharted 3, fantastic shooty shooter. Mm-hmm. Last of Us, emotional zombie thriller. Now, I, I would argue that's more of just a description, not really yeah. a review. Yeah. yeah. You a need review sort of a, you need a, a judgmental a... attitude uh-huh. in yeah. there. Uh, but anyways, he says, I have had the best summer of gaming. It's almost like having a genre of movies like locked behind a gate for 10 years, and now you only get to watch the very best of them for super cheap. My backlog contains Uncharted 4. Uncharted Lost Legacy, Bloodborne, and Horizon Zero Dawn, and Spider-Man. Ooh. But of course, Spider-Man's not part of your back catalog. That's yeah. your forward oh, yeah. catalog. Mm-hmm. But it will be by the time you get to yeah. yeah, it will be too. Exactly. And all the rest of so it. since he hasn't played these games on his back catalog, I think we should, we should try to uh, provide three-word reviews for him. So, you know, sure. What's coming up. Uncharted 4, uh, I, took, I took a crack at these. What do you think about satisfying shooty conclusion? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Keeping with the shooty with bit. The shooty. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and then for Uncharted Lost Legacy, I would say, Say me standalone shooter. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's That's also great. alliterative. But for Bloodborne, uh, Brian, I think you're more of the Bloodborne fan. Ooh. You have a three word review of Bloodborne? Oh, man. That's so funny. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I have like inspirational quotes I could give. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going <laughs> or don't give up or. Uh, what what is it? Prepare to try? That's mm-hmm. oh, that yeah, for Bloodborne? Yeah, that's... Yep. It could be, well, I tried. Yeah, well, I tried. It's <laughs> not bad. Or you are dead. <laughs> uh, for Horizon Zero Dawn, what do you think about beautiful robo dino hunting? I put robo and robo dino is all one word. Sure, okay. I made yeah. that one word. Yeah, okay. Robo-dino. That works. That works. The game's really pretty. Uh, anyway, he says, can't wait to share my three word reviews. Until then, I will leave my three word review of Game Scoop. Witty, quirky, fun. I like Aww. that. Witty, quirky, That's fun. Good. That's good. I like that. P.S. I'm a new dad. But no double dad like Justin. Mm-hmm. No triple dad like CJ. Nice. Mm-hmm. Welcome. Heart double dad. Welcome. Uh, okay. It's a big party. I picked some games that I know you guys are fans of. Justin, what's your three word review of Final Fantasy 15? Emotional. Bro. Road trip. <laughs> but no, you're, that's the same problem as the uh, Last of Us review. You need, you need like a judgment. Emotional. Go, we don't know if judgment. it's... But that's not, that's not... It could be good or bad. Okay. Well, you know what? You're welcome to write your own <laughs> review of Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> well, okay. Then uh, let's give CJ a chance. CJ, what would you come up with, with, with for Destiny 2? Ooh. How about um, Broken Dreams Grinding? Wow. wow. Do you have a podcast about that? <laughs> it's like I've thought of that oh, one before. Man. Oh, yeah. The pain Destiny 2 inflicts on you daily is just, uh, wow. it's God, pretty real. You're in an abusive relationship <laughs> over there. That's yeah. all I've been told. You've got to talk about that so game for an told. hour a week. <laughs> 30 minutes. 30 minutes. <laughs> 35 if we're, if we're lucky. That's, That's stretching it. Do you still play it every day? 
I do. I mean, for the most yeah. part, like it's one of those things where I, I grew up being a Halo guy and a Call of Duty and Titanfall and all that stuff. So I play it because I like it. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for the laughs because every time I say it in the office, no, I don't think it's funny. Everybody looks at me and like, are you OK? Uh, but no, I actually really do like it. And there's a bunch of content that gets like tossed in the mix once every month or so. So it's, it's a good game, good. but it's getting a little bit of flack in the last little bit since the sequel. So still a good game. All right, Brian, is Resident Evil 4 your favorite game of all time? I, yeah, it's, it's up there. It's one of those? Yeah, that or Link's Awakening go back and forth either way. All right, well, give us your three-word review of Resident Evil 4. What are you buying? <laughs> <laughs> what are you buying? There you go. It's also a little unclear whether or not you like the game <laughs> yeah. from that review. But, it but is a, this is a no I love quote. it, I love it. No, it's very good. Uh, I picked Dead Cell since that's what I've been playing lately. Mm-hmm. Brian, what do you think about badass roguelike platformer? Yeah. Let's do that, it. That's it's accurate. Mm-hmm. You're getting a lot of double words there, but judge just think it's in. You got it. I mean, it's tough. <laughs> three words. <laughs> three is very tough. Five is like that gives you a little bit. Yeah, I really can't wait to talk about that game. By the way, that's great. That's I mean, we can talk about it. We were talking about it now. We, yeah, uh, yeah. And there's like review embargoes, even though it's like been. Like, you have the. Mm. You have the. So you're both playing an early Switch version, but the game's in early access. It's been early access yeah. for like a year on Steam. Yeah. So, but I don't know how much you can talk about because I think you're playing like the version 1.0. Well, it's just really good. Okay, it's, it's incredibly good. You're the, fine. It's some of my favorite gameplay of a of, in a two D game in a very long time. It's just incredibly nice. quick, snappy, and fun, and uh, great pixel animation yeah. too. Yeah, totally gorgeous. <laughs> All right, this is Tony from San Diego. Another Tony. Another Tony. Mm-hmm. Not Are you big, sure? Not big Tony. Tony from San Diego. Got it. Mm-hmm. Other Tony. First off, love the show. Been listening for about a year now. Look forward to it every week. You don't need to butter us up. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> my question is my primary console as of late is the Nintendo Switch. With the, release in, with the recent release of Wolfenstein 2 on Switch and the upcoming release of Octopath Traveler, it's a little bit, a few weeks old, two games I'm very excited for, I came to the dilemma of which to buy. What I ended up doing was watching a Let's Play of Wolfenstein 2 because I couldn't justify spending $60 on a game I would only play through once and that I could beat in eight hours or so. Yep. I've been a hardcore gamer my entire life. After finishing the Let's Play, I felt as though I had cheated by not actually playing the game. What are your thoughts on this, and have any of you had a similar experience? I will say Ooh. this. Uh, Tony from San Diego's story is a single-player game developer's nightmare. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, all, I'm all for like experience over sort of secondhand experience, right? I, I know there's yeah. a, I was, I, I like, I you was, know what's way better than secondhand smoke? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> or just smoking it up. It's direct. Um, no, like I came back from Tokyo l- last year and I put up pictures and this guy was just like, yeah, uh, Japan looks cool. Like I watched some videos on YouTube, so I don't, I don't feel like I need to go. <laughs> yeah, you like, got it. You got what? the whole yeah. experience. Really not the same. <laughs> like it's, a, those are like really just waking up in something and walking around it. It's a different story. Um, with video games, Obviously not as sort of cut and dry there, but I will say specifically on Wolfenstein 2, which is a great game, buying the Switch version was the quickest I felt immediate regret with a Nintendo Switch purchase, mm. period, of, of any game on that on that platform. Mm. Why is that? Yeah. First of all, uh, that game is incredibly cheap on almost every other platform. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like sub $20 almost everywhere. Um, secondly... It feels like it was like a, a dare that somebody pulled off, which doesn't necessarily translate to something that's enjoyable and fun. Like, I think it's a, it's a magical and amazing that they shrunk that game down. They put it on the Nintendo Switch. Mm. Is that the best place to play, like, a cinematic shooter like that? Probably not. Like, the novelty is great. It's cool that it's there. It's sort of like when they put Resident Evil on, the, on, on Game Boy Color. You're like, good Whoa. job, but <laughs> yeah. I don't really need to play that. Um, the text is super small. There are parts in the game where like narrative cues happen where the character holds up a piece of paper and you go to read it and you just can't. Mm-hmm. And you're like, right. well, that actually depends. On your TV as well? The readability. So, on the, no, on, the like playing on handheld yeah. version. Yeah. Um, okay. I, the, 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 the frame rate isn't that great on TV either. The resolution isn't that great. Like, mm. um, Whereas something like Octopath, I think, is optimized specifically for that platform, built for the ground up right. for it. Um, uh, probably you're going to, not probably, definitely you're going to get a lot more replay value out of it, and at least hours per dollar or whatever spent. <sighs> I, I don't I don't think you should watch Let's Plays for an entire games on YouTube, but 
Like in this case, if you had to make that choice between those two, I think you made the right call. Hmm. Like you are getting like Wolfenstein is a really gamey game, right? So you're getting a way, you know, you're getting a shadow of the experience to watch a Let's Play on YouTube versus a mm -hmm. game. Like if you were to watch a Let's Play of a Telltale game or like Oxenfree, like yeah. then you, uh, to me, you are directly taking money away from the game developer at that point. Yeah. Whereas like Wolfenstein, you're making the trade off of like, I'm gonna miss all this like really satisfying shooting in order to experience you know the cinematic story, right. and just the banana stuff that happens in that game in a second hand way. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was weird with God of War because I think that was maybe concern for that game initially as well. And I mean that was a game where I kind of checked it out a little bit online, and then I was like, I don't want to ruin any of this. Right. And then I grinded it out, and that was yeah probably one of my favorite like games in the last 10 years i think with that game too it's it, it opens up a lot more there's a lot more sort of diagonals in that game yeah it's not necessarily very point to point linear yeah. yeah and i think wolfenstein's a lot more linear and that and, and for that reason i was going to say like it, i guess it depends on the type of game but mm -hmm. uh yeah i mean for i would classify god of war as one of those ones that definitely i would not want to stream even for myself like i don't get how people stream those kind of games online just to play through the campaign once when you kind of want to be emotionally invested into it and i don't know I was giving I was giving uh, Fran Mirabella here at IGN mm. hell yeah. for that when Battlefront Two came out because he was like, oh, I haven't played the story yet, but I'm streaming it tonight. And I was like, you're yeah. gonna stream it for the first. I was like, your friend like, wrote that game. I know. You're like, just gonna talk over it the whole time. <laughs> yeah. You want to go Infinity? Yeah. Go see Infinity War opening weekend and just talk through the whole thing. Hey guys, what's up? I'm watching a movie. You want to watch it with me? So, I don't know what Thanos just said, but thanks. <laughs> You know, it's, it's a thing, off. thing a lot of people are doing, though. I know, so, I, mean, I know, totally. It makes sense. It's legit. I yeah. understand it for stuff like Fortnite, Call of Duty, Minecraft, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't really get it for something that's like a linear story-driven game. At least not the first time, you know? Sit back and yeah, actually like take enjoy it. In. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to me, it's it's like, it's like the difference of having friends over to watch a football game and wanting to watch a movie yeah. like for the first time right. when you don't want people to talk during the movie, right? Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you, you totally nailed it, Damon, that this is... This is a developer's nightmare right now. This yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like uh, they spend uh, years and millions of dollars crafting the single player narrative, and then someone just well, I'll just watch it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They should have just play. made Fortnite. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> this is exactly sure why developers make <laughs> games as a service. So uh, I would also say, you know, he says the Switch is his primary console as of late. So if he has other consoles, why not? You just should have just gotten Wolfenstein for cheap on mm -hmm. PS4 yeah. or whatever yeah. the other console is you have. Um, I would say that if you want single player games you got to support them that's all like yeah that's yeah. i mean sure like if you're uh if you're happy watching a, a playthrough online that's fine but like don't expect developers to keep making them for you if you're not going to support them yeah and there's obviously a market for them right before we started recording today we got the mpd numbers for yep. june god of war on its third month was the second best selling game of the month yeah so, I, so I do take uh, a little bit of issue with that everyone's like single player games you know they're not dead after I'll look at God of War. It made hundreds of millions of dollars, but it's like that is one of the best games to come out in the yeah, last decade, right. period, and is the pinnacle. Like that set the ceiling. That's the best a single player game will ever I mean, do probably. again. Like yeah. it's the absolute yeah. top in terms of quality and presumably some level. Like I don't know how it compares to like Zelda sales, for example, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, commercial and critical success. Like, that's it. And it doesn't come anywhere close to, like, a game like Call of Duty. Or well, I don't even like, want to compare it to, like, Fortnite because yeah. that's such an international phenomenon. Right, right. Like, <laughs> so that's, like, like yeah, it proves that if you make one of the best games of all time, you'll be a big, you know, critical success, commercial success as well. Well, that's but all like, anybody has to do, Justin. They just yeah. have to make the best <laughs> game of all that's time. It. Yeah. That's it. No that's all the time. Like, the, 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 the better comparison is, like, a game like, I don't know, like, Vampire. Like, something like that. Mm. Like, a single A, single player player game like yeah. can anything like that survive well, or I mean, do you have to be god of war isn't right, wolfenstein yeah. 2 a single a yeah. single player game yeah bethesda had some trouble with that like dishonored uh, mm -hmm. dishonored 2 i really like dishonored, dishonored yeah yeah well when you think about how how many years that took like just listen to Corey's story about yeah. the labor of love that that game mm -hmm. is like that's super risky right like, just do that in general and then like i mean it, it could have gone the other way i mean obviously they oh easily like, yeah in it, but yeah it was, that's, it was a great game. Yeah, that sets the standard. Like, you can't have a single player, negatively driven, narratively driven game sell more than God of War. All right, moving on. Let's check out this uh, tome that's on the desk here. Sweet. This Ooh. is the just released SNES Omnibus. Ooh. This is out now uh, from author Brett Weiss. This is $50. It's hardback, and it uh, aims to catalog every single SNES game released in North America. Mm -hmm. And this is volume one. So this is games A through M. Mm. Wow. 
Look for part two. <laughs> deep cut. Uh, <laughs> Leave. I didn't even put that together. That's so it's been cool. a while since Damon and I have done our other show. <laughs> our other show. <laughs> Uh, so every game gets a write-up with box art and then like uh, info about like publisher and developer, screenshots, and then some like information about the game. So hole, it's pretty cool. in one. As I was as I was flipping through here, like I get said, this I is know. every single game released. So for instance, First Samurai. Wow, you know oh, the game. That old First chestnut. Samurai from Kimco. Flashback. Uh, Flashback is a legit. I was classic. just thinking so, of Out of This World, and it's yeah. funny that what, uh, what kind of stuff drawn. does it have for each game? It has box art, the a yeah. pick of the cartridge, screenshots, uh, information about the game, and then quotes from like EGM and GamePro at the time. Oh, awesome. That's cool. That sort of stuff. Is there a yellow faded uh, uh, on some one of the cards? In there. No, the cards look like they're <laughs> Did they uh, like? Do they give the same amount of attention to like you know like a, some a, of the games get two page spreads? I was gonna say because it feels like a little bit of a failing that uh, Hole in One Golf gets the same amount of space dedicated to it as <laughs> like, the Lost see, Vikings. Let's like, just see mm, how many, how many pages. So Legend of Zelda: Link, Link to the, the Past gets yeah, two, two pages. pages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lemmings only gets one page. Lemmings Two only gets one page. It's Mario Magic World gets one page. Mario World, uh, two pages. That's why I wanted to ask you guys. Okay, so uh, if this is every Super Nintendo game, A through M, what do you think is the first entry? Adam's Family. Oh, no, it's a numbered game. Mm, uh, see? It, it's like a baseball. Clearly Canadian. It's a baseball simulator game or something like that because all those games started in the, like, 1001, yada, 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 and they're always at the top of, of uh, SNES list. But I can't remember. It is 1001 something. Ooh. Yeah, I didn't think about number games. I'm trying to think about other yeah. games that start with the number now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's some kind of baseball simulator game. Okay, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's you guys need some help here. <laughs> uh, but it is a numbered game, isn't it? It's a numbered game. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Are we doing 20 questions already here or no? <laughs> Any other guesses? 007? That's a good guess, yes. but oh, there's yeah. not a 007 game on Super Nintendo. But it is based on a movie, if that's helpful. Oh, it's an IP. Movie. 101 Dalmatians. Good that's guess. also a good guess. It is Three Ninjas Kickback. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't guess that. Published by Great S- film. Published by Sony. Wow. There you go. Published Saga. by Sony, 1994. So only one year before the PlayStation was and released. And so this guy says this is the, num- the number one Super Nintendo game yeah, of that's all. That's how this is <laughs> recorded. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Controversial by choice to put uh, Zelda in the middle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and likewise, if this goes through M, what do you think is the last game in this in this volume? This one does start with M. Uh, z- what's, what's... What do you think? What's a, a late alphabet... Um, M game for Super oh, Nintendo. Oh, Mega Man. Mega Man's a good guess. Mega, Mega, Mega Man, Man, really? That's you know that's no. the last letter of the alphabet. No, no. Mega Man. <laughs> it's only American oh. releases, so like uh, Mother <laughs> Mother was like Earthbound, right? So it can't be that. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't have to end with Z. Or are we talking about the last it, one in this? In this, in this one. One. So it just goes through yeah. M. Okay. Yeah. Mothman. <laughs> Mothman. <laughs> um, that's not Muzzy bad. the video game. Ooh, that one's really close. Is You're it really? really close there? It's Musia. M U S Y A. Okay. Musia, the classic Japanese tale of horror. You know. Sure. I, no, I don't. No, I don't know either. From publisher Seda. Can I see the the screen? Yeah. What's that, that game? Musia. Oh man, I've never the heard of it. Classic Japanese tale of horror. It looks like Castlevania. Miss Pac Man second. Okay. Miss Pac Man second. Guess that. Wow. I guess that. Huh. What's, what's the appendix at the end? Uh, there's just information about stuff emulating it's Super like, Nintendo. Like 15 pages on Super Ninjas. <laughs> A uh, whole thing on the con- on the console wars. They rank the ninjas. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's cool. SNES Omnibus. I've been flipping through it. and I think it's pretty interesting because there's just so many games I've never heard of. There are two Battletoads games on the NES. Yeah. Wow. Or SNES. Yes. Battletoads in Battle Maniacs and Battletoads in Double Dragon. Double Dragon. Mm-hmm. Both. Good what about Bronchi the Bronchiosaurus? Uh, <laughs> what? Why didn't we bring that up in our prehistoric games <laughs> round up? <laughs> Bronchi. Bronchi the Bronchiosaurus. It's the weirdest Does thing. Does bronchitis? <laughs> why did the early to mid '90s have that obsession with like cavemen? I know it's so weird, right? Because from? of Land Before Time and yeah. dinosaurs. Yeah, thing? I think we were just really into dinosaurs in general. But then it so also like bled into Hollywood. Oh, with, also Casino Man, Jurassic Park. Park. Yeah. yeah, it was in the two. Uh, Brett Hall hockey, that's hilarious. You ever play Stanley Cup hockey? That was no. also have, notoriously. Yeah. That's a very, yeah. No. Oh, Dino City. Dino City. <laughs> Played Dino City. I thought it was pronounced Dinosity. Dinosity. <laughs> that's right. Dungeon Master. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating how many Super Nintendo games there are that I'm not mm-hmm. familiar with. So good. Really anyway. cool book. That's awesome. All right. Quickly, before we get into video game 20 questions here, we have an email from Sherry. And she says, I have a special request for a birthday shout out to my husband, husband, Clark. Petri? Petri? One of those. 
Clark. <laughs> Mr. Sherry is his name. He's been a loyal listener to your podcast since the very beginning, and as far as I know, has not missed an episode. Wow. He loves your commentary, banter, and finds pure enjoyment from all you do. From your recommendations, he has introduced me to several games, including The Witness and Stardew Valley, and slowly got me into the gaming world as well. Sweet. We are expecting our first baby this October. Aww, nice. Often he will play the classic video game songs on his phone and hold them to my belly for the baby to hear. Yes. That's sweet. It's a really special, fun yep. thing he does for our future spawn. He's so excited <laughs> to raise a little gamer. Hope you guys will be willing to read this on your podcast to him. He's a pretty great guy, and I hope he has the best birthday on August 7th. Happy birthday, Clark. Clark, on August 7th, uh, you should treat yourself to Dead Cells. That's right. Ah. We, uh, you and, and I, your child named Spawn will love it. <laughs> I hope, doesn't know if boy I hope or girl Sherry yet. and Clark's kid is just a huge jock, and they're so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. yep. I, I just want to play basketball, Mom. Uh, no. Games are for nerds. <laughs> Congrats. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to Video Game 20 Questions. Our suggestion this week comes from John Doyle in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Whoa, that's my hood. Really? <laughs> I, that's where I grew up with Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Did you grow up with John Doyle? I didn't know him. He says, get ready for our <laughs> Eastern Iowa scoop. I live in Cedar Rapids, and as an adult game collector... Ooh, adult game collector. Uh -oh. <laughs> I frequented the Toys R Us, where young Samuel Claiborne acquired his NES in Cedar Rapids. I guess he told that story. Uh, shout out right. to that super target. <laughs> I've received email updates that the store will Whoa. officially be closing this coming <laughs> yeah. Friday. Aww. I will be sad to see it go, as they typically have had better selection and quantities for things like Amiibo than anywhere else in the area. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let the questioning begin. I, okay. Uh, does your character wear a hat? To avoid any uh, argumentation, you, your character's head is covered. I don't know if it's a hat, but your head is covered. Covered? I don't... What? <laughs> I don't know if you qualify it as a hat. Covered? But his head's not naked. <sighs> they wear headbands and three ninjas kick them <laughs> <laughs> Is it three? No, it's good. Because they're ninjas. Um, um, can you see your hands? Yes. Or they're yeah, not covered? <laughs> Well, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Hold on. What are you asking? You can, can can you see your hands? Yes. All right. But does that count? What if you clarifying question? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I were wearing gloves or mittens, yeah, and I have my hand out like this, would you say mm -hmm. you could see my hand? For the purposes of this game, I would say yes, because okay. really you're just asking if you can like see your character. Uh, in there, right? That's what you're asking. Yeah. You weren't asking, can I see my character's bare hands? <laughs> I just meant hands, but the rules <laughs> changed with the covered head. <laughs> I think I got it. And everything question. I thought I understood. You, was, you can was, see your character's hands; they may or may not be bare. Okay. <laughs> there you go, David. <laughs> <laughs> is is the character a ninja? Will you um, stop? <laughs> I'm joking about that. <laughs> you're asking? Yeah. Uh, not. In, in in some of his in some of his appearance, whoa! In some of the characters' oh, appearance, oh, it's a he. He's one of the three is. ninjas, and he's kicking back. <laughs> he's not. It is not typically a ninja, but <laughs> that doesn't mean that it, the character hasn't ever appeared as a ninja. In this yeah. game, though, in this game, your character is not a ninja. Okay, he's not a ninja. He, wow, I gave you too much information. He's, he's, right. Okay, so he's. Not he's a ninja. <laughs> he's not a ninja, but he he will but be. He has someday. been, or he has been one he in a be, previous or life. Or he has been. I don't know. Who <laughs> has once or will be a ninja? <laughs> hmm. Ooh, that's really good. Really that opens a lot of doors. Wario closes Kirby? a lot too. Kirby, yeah, Kirby. Uh, no, did this game come out before? Kirby's head's not covered. Well, it's his it, head is just his whole body. <laughs> I think. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. He's got Except there's flippers, right? Yeah, he's got feet and those weird He doesn't have feet. They just flippers. drew those on DeviantArt. Is Kirby doesn't have feet. Kirby absolutely has feet. Kirby's not brown feet. shoes. Okay. He doesn't have a head. Sometimes he has How does he walk? He's got a body. Well, when he floats, he doesn't have feet. It just gets absorbed into his torso. All right. Like a turtle. <laughs> just like a, okay. Um, is it Kirby? No, did this come out before 2000? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Pre-2000 game. Can't see his head. Was it in the Can't arcades? No. Mm. Okay, that's five. Okay, um, was this a platform exclusive game? Yes, this came out before 1990. No, wait a minute. This is a platform exclusive game, but it's part of a franchise for sure. So it's a ten year window there. At one point or in a previous point, he does the ninja, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or he has been. Yes. Mm. <clears throat> what was your question? 
Um, I already forgot. I was so excited with my. I, I, I think it was before 1990, right? Yeah, or if it was in the arcades. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's not in arcades. Not an arcade. Not before 1990. No, it's not. a 90s game. 90s game. Oh, I think I got. I think I got a good one. Okay. Is it? Is the character a good character or like villain? We need like, yes I, or no I know. questions. That's what I mean. Uh, see, it's my first time. Yeah. Uh, okay. You, move you, on. I'm gonna try to <laughs> phrase it in a different way. <laughs> um, is this a Nintendo game? Like, like, is this a Nintendo exclusive game? IP, yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. hold on. That Brian did not ask IP. Yeah. Sorry. This game was exclusive to a Nintendo platform. Got it. Was this game exclusive to the Super Nintendo? No. It's NES and Game Boy. Yeah. No, it would be N64 probably. Oh, damn it. Oh, yeah, it could. <laughs> you we, gave me a look like I got you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, could we late NES or yeah, it's early unlikely in 64? Yes. Yeah. Not that early in 64. Is that a question? We just eliminate Nintendo or N64 right off the bat? Yeah, I think you should ask. Is it uh, on N64? No. Uh, that's 10. Oof. Game Boy. Game Boy game? Game Boy or NES or late NES. Yeah. Nintendo exclusive Game Boy game. Well, now we've, we've got to do it. Is this a Game Boy game? Nope. Son of a bitch. So oh. it's an NES game. <coughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. We got, we got, we got one of them back I was asking there still. These guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so late NES. Game. Late NES game exclusive. You can see his hands. Exclusive what? You can see his hands. You can't see his face is covered. Yeah. And the hands are also probably covered. What is a late? The question, the question I want to ask is, 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 he, is he a villain? Like, that's what I want to know, because then it would determine whether or not he was, like, a, a main, like, protagonist. Where are you well, we're going naming, We're naming well, yeah. games. I know, but that's what I'm trying to... But where do you think... Where, where, what are you leaning on? I, I don't know. The you can thing. say it. We can work. No, I, I, I don't have an idea. I'm just <laughs> oh. trying to... I'm trying to eliminate the later part of the so I'm trying like to think early 90s. Late, late. late NES games were, like, Wario's Woods. Is this definitely an NES game? Well, yeah. I think so. We don't know that. It's yeah, a he, Nintendo he, he, game from the 90s. It's not yeah. Game Boy? I asked Game Boy. No, he, he, and it's not Game no Boy. No Game Boy. It's not Game Boy. It's not Game Boy. You got to do this, guys. I, I've been playing 20 questions for years in the back studio there. If we don't get this. Yeah, we're in real trouble. Was this game developed by Nintendo? No. Mm. Okay. Were there late Mega Man games on the NES? I think Mega Man like four, five, and six are in the '90s. Maybe just five and six. Is that a hat? That's a helmet. But uh, that yeah, counts. you can kind he of. Says hats, his head's covered, unless it's a oh. part of it. What's he mean by covered? Is it? <laughs> so, so he, clarifying question. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't even know if you can answer this for us. This is more just a philosophical <laughs> question. <laughs> Mega Man has a fleshy face. Yeah. And then has like a helmet over it. But is the helmet a part of his body? It comes He's off. He's a robot. Hair. Too. He has hair underneath. He has yeah. hair underneath. He's a robot. It's all fake. <laughs> He's got nice locks in there. Um, the the opening of Mega Man Two already answered my own question with okay. his hair. That's also eighties, but that's cy- that's cybernetic. It's not real. <laughs> <laughs> cybernetic hair, but it yeah. flows in the wind quite what nicely does, in the what NES if, version. What if you screw or bolt the helmet onto his head? At that point, is it a part of him? <laughs> well, what if I s- bolted a helmet onto your head? Is it a part of you? <laughs> 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 for that time, I guess, <laughs> in that moment. Um, All right, we're at 12. <laughs> Is there multiplayer? No. Oh, damn it. We were hey. doing so well. What are <sighs> late non Nintendo made NES games where your character may be a ninja in future? Darkwing yeah. Duck is up there. Oh. I don't know if he does ninja stuff. Those are hands. <laughs> Those are <laughs> hands. <laughs> pressure <laughs> is. Oh, <laughs> too far from my. I was thinking, I was thinking Ryu Hayabusa, but then I don't want to like. I don't think because he's primarily ninja, so but he's mostly he's almost yeah, exclusively no. a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, who is human? Uh, I'm just trying to think of like. Ah, uh, is this game developed in America? No. Ooh, it's okay. Japanese. Ninja Japanese. Turtles. You you think that they go on to be ninjas at some point? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. I might retcon that. Thinking, oh, oh. Uh, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna take that one back because uh, my first instinct was that it was not developed in America, but I'm actually not 100 percent sure. Okay, so I understand about there. All right, not sure where this was developed. Is this game like well liked and well remembered? Yes, it almost always is. I don't know why I bother asking. 
Could be. Well, when when was Blaster Master? That was, that was early, early 80s. Yeah, there's no ninja. Yeah, that was like... This dude goes on to be a ninja. Yeah. <laughs> he makes multiple... We games. know he wasn't a ninja before this because this is an NES game and there's I'm, nothing before the NES. <clears throat> I was start. just trying to cover my bases. I wouldn't it's spend character, too much time thinking about the ninja It's a character thing. that appears... Yeah. I've spent the entire ninja. time thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ever since three ninjas. Ever since three ninjas. <laughs> um... Is this game, uh, are you doing a lot of platforming in this game? Jumping around from platform to platform? <laughs> yes. I, I, platform. I clarified what. <laughs> That's 15. Oh. So we know it's a, an after 1990 mm-hmm. game on a mm-hmm. Nintendo platform, but not Nintendo 64 or Game Boy. Your character's head is covered. You see your hands. It's a platformer. This game is exclusive to a Nintendo platform. Uh but that doesn't mean that there weren't like other uh, entries in this like series on sure. other platforms. Okay. Um, mm. There's stuff like what, like Strider. Is it helpful to know if it was licensed? But probably not if this is a character. I think that's that helpful. Know. Is it licensed? Yes. Oh. 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 Make kids. Four big questions left. Big IPs. Uh. One of the big IPs in the. Uh but it's not. It's like Back to the Future. I don't know, man. No. He never was a ninja. No. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't uh, time travel that far back. No. This is really hard. <clears throat> this this is shouldn't hard. be really hard. I feel like this should be easier. Uh, uh, the Doc's kerchief that he wears in Back to the Future 3, it's all like faded, and it's just a kerchief that he's wearing in the Old West. It's made from his shirt. <laughs> it's the same pattern as the shirt he's wearing in Back to the Future yeah, too. Okay. It's a fun wow. fact. There you go. That helps us a lot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about Back to the Future. <laughs> um. All right. Let's bring it home. This is really hard. This is hard. I'm trying to think about. You know that it's a well liked. Yep. Game, a well liked licensed game. Oh. Do you think it's Batman? It could be. Where's the thing on his head's covered? Could it's covered. Be. He doesn't wear a hat. Late nineties, or early nineties. It's based. Yeah. Is it based off of a comic book? Mm, that's a tricky question. Why? Mm, I mean, <laughs> I guess character. There may be like. Is, character. Is it, is it based off of a comic book character? So it's yes. A, oh, okay, I was gonna rule out Batman there with, what, with his hesitation. What? No, no, no. I think it's bat. It's it's got to be Batman or Dark. But, well, here no here it's because it's it, Batman Returns on the NES or something like that. Yeah. Well, I well because Batman the first movie came out in '89. Right. Maybe it took them a little while to get their ish together. Make but that's together. why it's based off of a comic book character. But it's tricky. It's based off of a movie. Based off. Of, is it based off of? Is it a video game based off a movie that's a comic book character? Yes. Okay, well, we knew that. <laughs> no, we didn't. Yeah, because it's either Batman or Batman Returns, but I don't think Batman Returns came to the NES, and I don't think that was well-received. People like the original Batman video yeah, game. Yeah, the well-received thing is tripping me yeah. up. Yeah. It's got to be Batman. But maybe Batman the movie came out in 89, but video games are doing whatever they wanted back then. You got Darth Vader turning into a scorpion. There was no cops. That's true. <laughs> there was no cops. There's cops in Batman, the video game. <laughs> yeah. Or the Nintendo Entertainment System. <laughs> That's probably Batman. That's as good a guess as you could ask one more question and then make your guess. Is it <laughs> what's the best way to phrase this without giving it away? Um, Did this game star Batman? <laughs> well you can ask if it's based on a s if, if it's based on a movie that was a sequel. Is it based off the nineteen eighty nine movie Batman starring <laughs> directed by Tim Burton? Yes. <laughs> Is it Batman for the NES? Yeah! yeah! Buzzer oh, beater there. Oh my god. Man. That was close. Whew. Buzzer beater. Nicely done. I mean, yeah, you, you did it. You right yeah. at the yeah. end. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was, all that was nice. He does go on to be a ninja. Well, Batman there was ninja. Just Batman ninja. Yeah. That's right. right. I was just trying to cover my bases. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, oh, Sunsoft. Sunsoft oh, right. is. Were they Japanese? I nobody They did a bunch of licensed games, no, but like. No way of knowing, really. Uh, like, um, they did Adventure Island. Like LJN did all those like bad, like uh, Predator and Total yeah. Recall. Yeah. They were Japanese, yeah. but like. Was there, there was Batman's a Predator NES game, right? Yeah. Is it bad? It's terrible. <laughs> They're all bad. They did, uh, you know, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh-huh. And yeah, all yeah. That stuff. So. But Batman yeah. was good. So that's why yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Sunsoft, or maybe they're like a European now. So I'm not even sure. Wow. Nice to see that. Buzzer beater. Yeah. <sighs> nice work, boys. We did it. <laughs> yes. Good stuff. 
We've done I it can, again. I can retire in peace. Thanks, mm-hmm. guys. That's all I needed. We did it. it Batman great. on Unions. Just like the detective himself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I really did not want to lose that. Batman always Correct. takes 20 full questions <laughs> to win 20 questions. Uh, Batman, or Justin, do you think Batman wears a hat? He wears a cowl. Yeah, so... What's the answer? What's the yes or no answer to does your character wear a hat? Yeah, dude, it's pretty hard when the shoe's on the other foot. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> so it's funny. We were, he I wears was, boots. Darkwing Duck. Is yeah, that? he wears Mega a Man. There was a couple that we were trying to like axe yeah. the equation there. And mm-hmm. so, but Batman was. I would say, yeah, nice. Batman wears a hat. And mm-hmm. so it always boils down to uh, that hat. Does the hat have, is, does it have a function or is it just for fashion? <laughs> is it attached to his head? <laughs> <laughs> and how hard they retcon function into his hat yeah or his, no for his, sure yeah so he gave him like cool vision and then like the funny ears they could hear sonars the most infamous moment in 20 questions history was when we said that sneak king the burger king king does not wear a hat because it's a crown and i revolt i almost quit <laughs> <laughs> oh those games are terrifying well, but, yeah. <laughs> so Sneak King wears a crown. Is he wearing a hat? Yes. Yeah. Well, th- no, who is who is under the hat? Like a, what? Well, yeah, it's, it's, like, king. it's like it's like the king. If it's a hat. So a, a crown is a hat. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I would say so. Mm. Yeah. Anybody can be a king if Here's you have what, a hat. I'm not, I, so the old I'm, mark it down. I'm retiring the does your character wear a hat question. Are you really? Oh. Yeah. I don't think you until next episode. <laughs> You'll see. Uh, I'll ask it. Or I, I'm always going to keep the. Can you see his hands? Yeah. Or their hands. I was wondering. Yeah, what, is that is that like a thing? Did I miss that one? Is that your? A question? lot of games you don't well, see the hands. You'd be surprised. Well, and that's fair. I, I guess. Forza. Yeah, I guess once we. Once Forza, we don't kinda, see your hands on the wheel. They do yeah. now, but the first one you. Once just we're saw thinking the, retro, I was like, nah, I mean, it's not first person. Mm-hmm. So, but all right. <laughs> all right, great job, everybody. Nice uh, listeners, next week I'm going to be out. I'm going to be traveling. However, we're going to have a very special guest host. What? Coming in what? to host GameScoop next week. Ooh. You're going to have to stay tuned Surprise? to find out. Why don't I know nice. that? I think you'll be in good hands. Can you see his hands? <laughs> <laughs> you will, Does you will see their hands because I gave them explicit instructions that during uh, 20 questions they have to count on their fingers. Okay. okay. So, nice. So it's uh, a dude with 20 fingers. <laughs> <laughs> 10 fingers, probably. <laughs> probably, but you never know. Uh, remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, My man. name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out.